All right, everybody, I want to welcome you back to another episode of the Shadows Podcast. This is a special episode, a Halloween episode. This is our third straight year of doing this. In the past, definitely, we encourage you to go check out those episodes if you missed them. D. Wallace from Critters, Cujo, E.T. The next year, we have Michael Bailey Smith from Hills Have Eyes. He was also Super Freddy uh, in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. And then this year... I mean, come on, we're we're working with it here uh, and not the newer ones, which I'm a big fan of, but we're going all the way back to 1990, Tim Curry, it, when we have Marlon Taylor here, he was Mike in the 1990 mini series on TV. Sir, welcome to the shadows. Hey man, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we were talking about it before he came on. Uh, but we had actually, my family had met him in the It cast, which we got such a cool It print uh, signed by the kids from the the Losers Club from the 1991. And um, just awesome to talk with in person. And whenever we were trying to uh, come up with a guest, it was kind of unanimous around the house. It's like, you got to reach out to Marlon from, from It. So um, I'm super thrilled to have you here. And let our listeners know where are you located. Uh, I'm up in Seattle, uh, Seattle, Washington, uh, which is funny because for some reason, all the older generation in my family who live on the East Coast think I'm in Washington, D.C. Um, <laughs> and I keep having to explain to them if I was in D.C., I'd see you guys so much more often. But I'm above California, above Portland. So uh, I like it up here, though. We got four seasons. I really enjoy it. Oh, it, Seattle's a bucket list place for me. I haven't been there yet. But I, are you a Seahawks fan? Uh, so uh, I, I'm a Raiders fan. I get a okay. lot of grief for that at work. Um, I do appreciate the Hawks, though. Uh, you know, I'm a Trojan fan. I see you're a Carolina fan. Yep. Um, yep. And with Pete Carroll being here, um, it makes it a little bit easier for me to appreciate the Seahawks. I, I could see that. I I'm a Cardinals fan when it comes to NFL. So okay. we're going to be fine if you're not a Seahawks fan. So <laughs> actually worked out for the better. Well, I want to put you through a couple of uh, rapid fire questions that we do with our guests here. First okay. one for you. What is a fear that you have? Uh, one of my biggest fears is a fear of heights. Fear of heights. Yes. But yes, you, yes. you do like snowboarding and all kinds of stuff like that, right? I do. The chairlift is the worst part of uh, actually going skiing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> um, especially when it's those um, two the uh, two seaters, because they don't have a bar yeah. on there. And a lot of times they move a lot slower than the uh, bigger chairs. And they usually have those for like the black runs, which are the runs I like to go on. Yeah. Um, and they have a tendency to be a little bit higher off the ground and they swing sideways and back and forth sometimes. And it's, it's just a little frightening um, yeah. for me. I have a tendency of just kind of looking up in the air and trying not to look down yeah. or just closing my eyes and playing my meat till I get closer to the top. Okay. What, outside of the It series, what is your go-to horror movie? Can you I hear got me you okay? breaking up on me. Oh, can you hear me okay? Are you able to hear me? So now, now you're slowing down. Why you, you, <laughs> oh, no. Ask the question again for me, outside of the It series. Yeah, outside of the It series, what is your uh, go-to horror movie? Ooh. You know, um... It's funny because I was thinking about what to watch tonight. Um, I'll tell you, I am a big Jason fan as well, um, especially with today being Friday the 13th. Mm -hmm. Happy Friday the 13th to everybody. Um, but I like the first one the best because Jason isn't even in the movie. Um, you know, it's his mom going around killing everybody. Mm -hmm. And those are kind of the types of movies I like uh, where you kind of have, um, not necessarily that jump factor, but you have the opportunity for your mind to like go on its journey and freak you out. Um, outside of that, one of my tops is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I was just telling somebody earlier that they needed to go watch that. Um, 
because I've never been afraid of clowns. I've always liked clowns. Um, growing up in New York back in like the 70s and 80s, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus yeah. was a big thing for me. Um, clowns at parties doing the balloon things and handing out candy and stuff. Um, Bozo, you know, Homie the Clown. <laughs> yeah. As you can see, Homie, Homie yep. the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll I'll show you this. I don't know if you can see, but that's my where is it at? Right over here, my killer clown section. I see them over there. I I see the little three tufts on them. Yeah, and I see them right next to them too, which is just kind of the head. Got the yeah. print behind it. Oh, I see that too. So you so yep. you like that movie as well? So the Chioto brothers, the producers, they were actually on the podcast uh, for our one hundredth episode. Really, and they talked a lot about the creation of it, and um, oh yeah, our we got the animatronic killer clowns out there for Halloween. <laughs> I, I had to tell my wife, don't put them right at the door on base, and you're going to scare all the little kids. You got to kind of put them in the corner for the adults to get that nostalgia. <laughs> well, you're supposed to scare the kids. <laughs> that that is true. That is true. But yeah, so um, yeah, that's that's good stuff right there. What what about go to book? What's a book that you would recommend someone listen to? Uh, you know, um, it's funny that you mentioned that. I'm actually, I never actually made it through it. Um, mm. So I'm actually trying to listen to it now on audio books. Yeah. It's just that it's like a 50 hour um, oh, yeah. book. <laughs> so whenever I can get to it, um, I'm also really big into sci-fi um, and Westerns and stuff. And I'm a big comic book fan. Mm. Um so like I'm super big on Wolverine. Um, he's kind of my favorite superhero. Um, and so I've been doing more graphic novels lately and uh, pick your adventure books. So mm. the books where you kind of get to read, you get to a page and it's like, choose this or choose that. And you turn to like a completely different page instead of moving in chronological order. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but right off the top of my head, um, a book that I just finished reading, which I think is super cool, which is a graphic novel, is The Last Ronin. Which Love is it. Actually, you you read it? Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 waiting to get. You're answering all the right questions. It's waiting to get graded, <laughs> but I've got here. Where is it at? Ah, yes, Michelangelo, man. And then I got. I don't just have that to get graded. I got the. Two alternate covers. Ah, um, man, after my own heart. I um, last one is amazing. To get the, I couldn't afford to get the two alternates, but I did get the first one that you have there. Yeah, um, I actually got two copies: one to actually read, and one to just keep, just nice and tucked away. Yep, and it, it's one of those. Even my daughter, she's uh, because I'm a, I'm a huge Turtles fan, and um, yeah, I got some Ronin stuff back here too. Um, okay, but uh. She even read the end of it and was just like in tears. Uh, so it's it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Uh, one movie role that if you could go back and have that one role, what would that be? Mm, a movie role, huh? Um, That's a good one. You know, um, I actually... Um, about 2014, I did an episode of Z Nation, and I got to actually play a zombie. So I'm thinking, man, anything that has zombies in it, like I'd love to actually have like a big part uh, playing a zombie. That was super fun. Mm -hmm. um, at this age now, it's funny. I would have loved to have played like the older version of Mike Hanlon 30 years later and the newer version of Stephen King's It. That would have been so um, many. I think that would have been great. I did enjoy who they casted for the role, mm -hmm. um, but but since I since I have the uh, ability to say something, I would have liked to have done. Um, I definitely would have liked to have done that. That'd have been cool, full circle moment. And I actually think all of us <laughs> should have had the opportunity yeah. to come back, especially since it was thirty years later. I think yeah. it would have been great. Yeah, absolutely. And final rapid fire question for you: You have dinner for three. With three historical figures no longer with us, who would you break bread with? 
Oh man, uh, you know, number one would probably be Malcolm X, man. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to break bread with him and pick his brain. Um, and it's funny because the next one's gonna be Martin Luther King. Um, and then I'd probably take it all the way back and I'd want to chop it up with Harriet Tubman as well. Mm, that's uh, a solid group. And it's just it's just really about just gaining that information and that knowledge. Um, and being able to have some real information to pass down to my two little kiddos. Yeah. We just came from Montgomery, Alabama, and um, Martin Luther King's church was right there. Just so much history there. But no, good. He's been invited to, I think he's right there with Jesus in terms of how many people have invited him to uh, dinner for threes. <laughs> so yeah, good, good choices. So you survived the rapid fires, and now I want to get into your story. So what was childhood like for Marlon? Uh, you know, I actually, um, I was born in New York. Um, I grew up in a house with musicians. So my grandmother was a jazz singer oh, wow. um, during the 50s and 60s. Her name is Bertha Green. Um, my mom was a pop singer in the 80s. Um, and so, you know, there was always a lot of music going on, a lot of dancing going on in the house. Um, by the time I was eight, uh, my dad, who was living in California at the time, uh, pursuing his acting career, I didn't know this ahead of time, but they were having me move with my dad, you know, but then mm. they did it in a nice way to where they were like, hey, you want to go live with your dad? And, you know, would you like to kind of get into acting? And and, and I, I've always wanted to be a cartoon. Like I loved cartoons as a kid. Yeah. And I actually thought cartoons were real actors. I just thought they had like a special camera that made the actors look that way. And so I was totally down. I was like, yeah, I want to go. I want to be a, I want to be an actor because I want to be a cartoon. So that's something I'd also like to do is like do some voiceovers. But um, moved to California, started going to acting classes with my Aunt Joyce, who is a um, big playwright um, out in New York City. And um, I think it was I moved to L.A. in 84. Okay. And in 87, I was in uh, my first sitcom television show, which was Amen, uh, mm-hmm. with Sherman Inslee. And um, after that, it was just commercials and sitcoms. And then uh, I had the opportunity for it when I was about 15. And that was 1989, I believe, yep. when I got uh, to auditioning for that. And I was super stoked because I'm a Stephen King's fan. I watched Silver Bullet a couple of days ago. Loved that movie. Um, with Gary Busey and um, Corey Hain. Um, You know, um, I had watched uh, Stand By Me, which is one of my favorite Stephen King films, which Mm -hmm. I didn't know was a Stephen King film at the time. Um, So I was super thrilled to have the opportunity to even audition for a Stephen King uh, production. How did you feel when you landed that first role on Amen? Oh, man, I thought I was moving on up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not to the east side but i yeah. thought i was moving on up um, you know um as a kid doing that work i think you don't really think about it um yeah. like for me it was fun it, it wasn't necessarily a career path at that point um i loved the craft service table up there they had all this candy all these cookies and all this soda pop that you're getting to eat in between takes and when you're not in front of the camera. So, you know, being a kid and having all those goodies, man. It's innocent. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then being able to get out of school. I mean, you can't be yeah. that, right? <laughs> what, what advice would 2023 version of Marlon give that young version of you? Uh, Man, just go hard. Um, put your all into it. Um, you never know how things are going to turn out in the future. Um, and anything you do, you know, just, just make sure you do it to the best of your ability. Um, and you know, at a certain part in my life and as a child actor, I started missing kind of hanging out with my friends Mm. and and just kind of working so much. And that was a little bit, that was after it. Um, a little bit more in my teenage years and you know I kind of stopped taking it so seriously um, and and you know once you kind of get away from it um, it's weird because time moves a lot faster than reality mm, so you know just being away from it you know you've got everybody a lot of other people trying to get into it 
Um, and so like even doing Z Nation was a big ump for me because it had been so long since I had done anything. And, you know, for a while you're like, can I even really still do this? Mm. You know? Um, so yeah, I just tell them, man, stick with it. Um, and you never know who you're going to meet. Like, it's a beautiful thing. You meet so many people, you make so many friends, you build so many bridges. Um, but to stay at it, stick with it. Um, cause right now, man, I work a nine to five. Um, and while I'm working my nine to five, I'm wishing I was somewhere in front of a camera doing what I used to do. <laughs> yeah. What, what are you currently doing now? Uh, I work for the city of Seattle now. I've actually been there for 17 years. Um, so I've got 13 more years before I can actually retire, hey, but it pays, bills, it pays the bills, it pays the bills, takes yep. care of the kids. Um, the beautiful thing about acting is you're never too old. So uh, once these guys are done with their uh, first four years of college, it's um, probably going to be back to that full throttle. Yeah. Um, you know, doing some Which theater. Really good. Uh, that's something I really enjoy. Um, you know, I still go and see like a lot of these newer cartoon movies. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you're just kind of amazed at whose voice it actually is. You might not catch it in the film, but then you see the credits. You're like, oh, that was so-and-so. Okay. Yeah, that was John Cena. Wow. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we we got to get you on Last Ronin when they when they make that movie. Please do. That's, that's Please the do. one. Yeah, La but Last I, Ronin. I'm totally down. I actually want Bo uh, the RZA to make a Bobby Digital movie. Mm. And I want to be in that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So uh, speaking of the, the It role, I want to talk about that one, being that it's, uh -huh. it's our Halloween episode. I'm sure you've never been asked about the It movie. Um, but with that, <laughs> how how did the audition go? Do you remember the audition? What stood out to you the most? Uh, what stood out to me the most is how many freaking times I had to audition. Really? Uh, oh, yeah, man. It was like it was a long process um gaps in between the auditions a lot of anticipation and anxiety like did i get the part are they moving on okay here's what you got to call back go back in you do it again and then it's like don't hear anything for a while and it's like all right you got another call back um and i, I think it was that way for a lot of us and um you know one of the things that we hear all the time is that people felt like um, us as a group of kids really actually had history and had a past. Mm -hmm. um, that's what showed through to them on the screen. And I think that's what they were looking for and why they were auditioning, auditioning, uh, auditioning us so much so often as they were trying to find that perfect mix in mm -hmm. a group of kids. And um, to tell you the truth, it was great working with those guys. And when we started, um, it was filmed in um, Canada, in Vancouver. So they had us all in the same hotel and it was like a party every night. You know, we were always in somebody else's room. Um, it was different than like a lot of times when you're doing work, um, say like if we were in California, everybody would have been going to their own homes, mm -hmm. you know, after um, work was done. But here our own home was just on different floors. Uh, we had a pool that we used to tear up until we got kicked out the pool um we were we would go out to movies and go out to eat together and stuff um and just kind of get in a lot of trouble and have fun yeah like you're supposed like to do kids, as a kid. exactly like kids are supposed to do yeah so i want to i want to do some uh word association or if you got a really good story that you don't think has been told about some of these people i want you to see if you wouldn't mind sharing it what about richard thomas richard thomas um i never really got to work with him really yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like I was the last one to get there. Yeah. Um, by the time I got there, all, all the other kids had already been there for a while. Um, as you know, I come in towards the latter part of part one. Um, for me, it was mainly with the kids, with the kiddos. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to work with Tim just in the um sewer scene. Because yeah. Mike really never has an interaction with Pennywise outside of that. He has more of an interaction with Henry Bowers as kind of my uh, yeah. nemesis, you know. How was that interaction with uh, – what do you remember about Tim Curry? Oh, uh, man, outside of him smoking cigarettes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've seen the pictures of him smoking cigarettes all the time. 
Uh, I mean, you know, he would, uh, when he'd be sitting over in his chair, he, you know, and we happen to look over at him, he'd give us like little, like little, <laughs> you know, he'd make faces and, um, but watching him work was, was a beautiful thing yeah. because he'd go from that to going to what you saw on screen, like in an instant, mm -hmm. um, and even in between takes, you know, he, he'd be able to pop out and then right when the camera started to roll and pop back into it. Go. Yeah, man. Um, and and before I did it, like I didn't really know as much of the work that he had done previous, you know. And so I started getting into watching more of that stuff. I love him in Clue, man. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> Clue and, and, I, and Home Alone. Home Alone. I was about to. Say, I was just about to say, and in Home Alone, man. The the best <laughs> scene is when he uh gets slapped at the counter, and he does the lip <laughs> quiver. <laughs> you bundle up it's awfully cold yeah that's ah oh, so good um what about jonathan brandis um you know the only time we really got to hang out with jonathan um was pretty much around set um mm. you know his mom kind of kept him kind of um kind of had the clamps on him if yeah. you will you know um i mean he had done a whole lot of work up to that point he was kind of more of the star of the group at that time mm -hmm. um but he was a really cool kid man um yeah. and and he was a great actor as well you know um as you saw him on screen man he was really able to kind of dig deep in those scenes when talking about his little brother georgie and, and stuff man and um i enjoyed working with him yeah and it's so heartbreaking like his story and what ended up happening with him and everything. My wife, I know, was a huge fan of his stuff. And it's it's a good example of, like, you get that fame, that notoriety. And then uh, from what I've read, you know, he was really struggling there at the end with, with roles, so on and so forth. How hard is that as a kid from you being on that side where it's like you've got this huge mini i mean it was a big deal when it came out it scared me to death but you're getting this <laughs> fame and notoriety and then you hear it from actors all the time especially here on the podcast it's almost like the blink of an eye it's like okay well now it's it's like you said that time and that reality it's like it's it's not here now mm -hmm. how does that affect like your your mental health um you know depending on how big you were and 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 where you are i think it can it can um affect you differently mm -hmm. um you know for me i really really like that was kind of the biggest thing i had done right. um and so i got a lot of notoriety from like my peers and stuff like that about it but outside of that you know like i was really hanging out with my friends. And that's the thing is I think you have to keep people that are true mm. around you. And so a little bit of me appreciates the fact that I kind of went the way that I did when I was a teenager, just because it allowed me to kind of maintain my sanity a little bit. Um, and, you know, one of the things I've learned through that is like, there's always another shot. Yeah. Um, and there, and there's always more, but sometimes people expect so much more of you when they see you a lot, when they see you out there and that can weigh on your shoulders heavily, especially if you're not being true to yourself. Um, and not to say that he wasn't being true to himself at all, yeah. but right. you know, like if you, if you're not being true to who you are and you feel like I always have to put on a mask around people to look a certain way, you know, um, I think it can weigh on you heavily, um. And, and that's why I really believe in just keeping good people around you, people who are positive, people who actually want the best for you. Um, and, you know, for me at the moment, man, my, my kids are, you know, I, I love having my kids around and, and I love having the family around and being with the family. Um, but like I said, I do want to get back into it. Yeah. Um, and so but I'm not rushing, though. you know, I'm taking my time when it comes. It comes um, being up here. There's not a lot of work. Um, and, you know, at times I'm like, you know, man, those days, you know, when I was doing all this stuff, if I had just kept moving forward, I could be here or I could be there. Or maybe I could have auditioned for that role. But, you know, in the same token, you know, what happens in life most of the time is supposed to happen. 
you know, yes. and, and, and you have to roll with the punches and you just kind of got to go with it. The universe's rejection is the universe's protection. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I believe that everything happens for a reason. It does. And not everything is personal. You yeah, know? that's very true. That's very true. You you mentioned Halloween season and, you know, watching some movies. Do you ever go back and watch the original It? I actually have it saved on my phone. Um, I actually have all three of them saved on my phone. But um, every time it comes on, I, I watch it. I was actually watching it the other day. And I kind of, it's funny because I fast forwarded through the movie just to my part. <laughs> really? See, that's like opposite of most people. Most people are like, I can't watch my part. Uh, oh, no. Well, you know, I, it's funny just hearing my voice from back yeah, yeah. then. Um, and then I was kind of just studying it a little bit to actually see, like, how I did and, and like, like mm. how I came across on screen and if it looked true to me as well, you know. Um, we're always our worst critics. Yeah, so, yeah. What's your family uh, thing? Well, funny enough, my kids have never seen it. Right, right, right. Um, I've tried to show it to them. They've never seen that. They actually watched Z Nation with me for some reason. They watched the zombies, but they won't watch the killer clown with me. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, my, my dad loves it. My aunts love it. Fam, fam, most of my older family and siblings love it. Um, it's always funny. People always have the joke about when they hear I'm in it and they're like, who were you, the clown? And I'm like, yeah, I, I wish. I'm like, no, I'm the only black person in the whole movie, man. Hard to miss. <laughs> what if you could? Well, first thing that was kind of crazy when I thought I, I think I'd read this, and then I went back and kind of looked at it. A lot of these horror icons, like you were mentioning, Jason earlier, and Jason one, he's not even or um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part One, uh -huh. he's not even in it. If mm -hmm. you go back and watch Beetlejuice, Michael Keaton's only in it for like, I think it's like 15 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. Tim Curry's only in it for a handful of minutes as well. And it was a long miniseries. I think it was like three hours total. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy when you see someone like these characters and they, they uh, you know, become larger than life. And they really only played that role for just a handful of minutes. But we're still every Halloween getting excited to check it out again. Well, I think the the beautiful thing about that is um the, the the what you get from just those small bits of time yes. that they're on that screen. Leave you um, want more. Yeah, exactly. And so like in in the original Friday the 13th, like all you hear is the Yeah. And so you're just you're you're constantly wanting to see what is this guy? Who is this guy? What does he look like? I've seen the mask. What does he look like? And and then, you know, you realize at the very end, they finally turn the camera around and give you a glimpse of mom coming at you with a knife. And you're like, whoa. Number okay. two is the potato sack. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. So, so, so you never really, and those are the kind of horror movies I kind of grew up on, like Old Dracula, the werewolves, the Frankenstein movies from back in the days, where you got like a glimpse of an eye just a claw or something like that and your mind got to run away with, yeah. with what was actually really there you know i think that's what actually keeps people up at night yeah you uh you mentioned the the newer versions of it what did you think of uh chosen and how he played your role of mike Oh, man, I actually I've met Chosen a few times he's a great guy great little guy um i think he did a great job yeah i did too um, I like that they brought out a little bit more of Mike's story in mm -hmm. that version. Um, they kind of opened him up a little bit more and gave you a little bit more insight into him um, and his family. Um, and, and that's one of the things I actually really liked about the newer versions as well, is they gave you different parts of the book. It wasn't a straight copycat of the original. Yeah. Um, it was almost like a different movie. Um, and so... I think he was a perfect choice to kind of um, chosen was a great choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to, to be Mike, man. Um, you know, I actually also got to meet Jeremy uh, Taylor as well, man. And I think he was great as Ben. Um, yeah, they were at that comic con we were at. Mm hmm. Now, so we've actually been at two comic cons with those guys. Nice. Um, and it's funny because 
they never put us side by side <laughs> <laughs> at the comic cons. We're always like on totally opposite sides of yeah. the room or like um the one we did um we did one in london as well with them where they were at a comic con and we were at a horror con which were both in the same building um separated by like tarps and and bars and stuff but you go and you look on their side and there's just this long line of all these you know young young girls and oh, young yeah. people and it's always funny to, you know, ask the young people, you know, when they come up and they're like, uh, you don't look like the you don't look like Mike. And it's like, oh yeah, you've only seen the 2017. Yeah, you're not Isaiah. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so so I love it when I hear young people who who love the nineteen nineties version, man. That that that's a that's a big plus for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we we went crazy when we heard the uh the original cast was going to be there for us. That would, my wife and I were like nerding out over that. And then my daughter's like, chosen's going to be there. Um, and she was all excited about, <laughs> about him going. So uh, question, one last question about it. If it often gets, uh, and, and before I ask the question, folks, go check out the documentary on it. Oh, yes. it's incredible. Oh, yes. It is very, very good. I believe it was it on shutter or, I believe you might be able to actually buy it at um, Best Buy now. It's on it's on ah, the shelves. Now. Go get it because it is it is great. Uh, I mean, great interviews. You're featured on there as well. Pennywise, the story of it. Pennywise, the story of it. It is amazing. Uh, I know we were talking to you about it last time we had met you, but it, it's absolutely great. What do you think the legacy would be for that movie? had the ending been a little bit different? Because that often gets criticized as the ending of the movie. Um, you know, I explain to a lot of people, um, you know, we, we have to think about the year that it was made. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a lot of CGI um, and stuff like that. Um, that, would, that was actually a person in that spider costume. Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, we got to kind of see the costume and kind of see that whole um stage that they had set up for you know that whole last bit um and just waiting to see how it was going to be in the movie theater once it was all done was a big thing for me um you know I can kind of say now at that point I, I didn't really like the fact that it was a spider um I wanted more than just that but it is what it is, you yeah. know. Um, and then at the time, like, I never really realized that it would be as big as it is now. I never knew it would become a cult classic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, miniseries were big, were big back in the 80s, you know. Um, so, I, like, even, not even until we went to the actual convention, like our first convention in 2017, when the newer version was coming out, I didn't realize that's when I first started realizing how big of a following it had. Yeah. And, you know, meeting people and just hearing how it affected their lives as kids and stuff like that, you know, cause you know, your friends, you know, your friends see you on TV and they're like, I'm not scared. That, I knew that was you. And I know it was. And so like, um, just hearing how it changed people's views, how people connected with it and all of that. And I, and I never realized that it would be like that. Um, and so with that being said, I think that um, makes it to the point to where the ending doesn't even really like it doesn't matter. Yeah. You, you, you know, um, it, it, it was everything, everything about the film. It was, you know, the losers, the people who felt like losers, the camaraderie amongst the kids. Um, and then the fact that we had all of those super super stars as adults, you know, that so, cast. Yes, yes, yes. And it's funny because I used to watch all of those people on television. So John Ritter. Was, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Night Court, and you know, watching Three's Company. Harry and, Anderson, yeah. Up yep, WKRP in Cincinnati with Tim Reed, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know what they could have done different at the end like i said i still haven't made it to the end of the book <laughs> the, bu the book's good um, and and I, and I think that's a criticism stephen king gets a lot too is that his books are abs and he kind of pokes fun at himself in a couple of his movies but his books are phenomenal uh 
but some for whatever reason in a couple of his films it's been the endings that get criticized the most i don't know uh, like he wasn't allowed to come on set so he wasn't really around oh, wow. um yeah yeah for the for the um for the filming of it um i i actually don't know if he had anything to do with um the screenplay like the writing of, he didn't uh, yeah so i mean yeah he, that, he was he didn't like the spider yeah, and so I, so I was going to say that and the fact that he didn't have anything to do with the screen writing portion of it, I think that was kind of just all on whoever wrote it and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and the studio. Uh, the Tommy Lee Wallace directed it, right? Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> how was, how was that with him? Uh, it was awesome. I know um, if he didn't have any kids at that point in life, he got a big lesson in dealing with them because uh, <laughs> he had to go into daddy mode a whole lot to get us to act right and, you know, to get us to, I need y'all to be quiet. I need you to pay attention. Look, we're, we're about to shoot. Come on, get to your, get to your points. <laughs> they, they had a Halloween 45 year anniversary reunion in Pasadena last week and we went uh -huh. And uh, he was there and we had met him before, but um, yeah, he was really cool to to talk to. And we were about to take our it print. My wife just didn't want to carry it around all day because it's wooden. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, awesome seeing him. They had the big Pennywise. The movie poster was up above his booth and everything. Um, over the 30 year journey since it, what would you say was the biggest, like that shadows moment, that biggest thing you had to overcome in life? Um, confidence, probably. Really? You, you know, um, just, just being confident in myself, mm -hmm. um, knowing that, you know, like stuff that happens in life isn't necessarily what defines you. Um, it's how you, it's how you rise up from that stuff. And so, you know, um, getting out there and hanging out with my friends and stuff, you know, I got in a little bit of trouble and you know, had to overcome some things. Um, but they were all learning experiences, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and in the same token, like, you know, if, if you make a decision, you have to deal with the consequences of that decision that you've made. Um, you know, as I started getting older, I started realizing it's not about just trying trying to fit in or, you know, it's it's just about being yourself you know, and, and being you. And so I've grown to be more comfortable with myself, Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and not feeling like, you know, a failure because I'm not doing that type of work anymore, you know, um, bouncing, you know, bouncing around from job to job, you know, as an actor, you kind of wind up working in the, um, restaurants, you know, restaurants, odd jobs here, odd jobs there, um, with no real fulfillment, really. You're just trying to work to, you know, pay your bills and all that stuff. And it seemed like the more I did that, the further and further away I was getting mm. from, you know, doing what I really enjoyed. And at the same time, watching people that I grew up with still moving forward in that business, you know. Um, and sometimes there's that, okay, were they that much better than me that they were still able to move forward in that business? More than likely, they were more serious about it. Like, mm. I got into it not with the idea as a little kid, like, oh, I want to be an actor. I want to be a great actor. And I want to make movies, you know, continuously through life. And a lot of these other people, that was their thing. And so you also have to understand, like, your path, like, you know, like, um, if that was my focus, then I probably would have, you know, done more along those lines. But, you know, I like to travel. I, I like to try this. I like to try that. Um, you know, I was a little scatterbrained as, as a youngster, you know, always trying to get into something different. Um, but, you know, now I feel like I'm a little bit more well-rounded. I'm kind of getting to that point, about to be 50. You know, I forget that sometimes until I look in the mirror and see all this gray on my face. But um, you're doing good for 50. I appreciate that. I, yeah. These kids, man, kids, the kids keep you young. You know that you got. They one. will. They keep you young, keep you running around, keep you active. You got to pretend sometimes when you know your back's hurting or your knees hurting. <laughs> or the end of the day from working and they want all that energy. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to give it to them. You got to give it to them. Um, so, yeah, you know, I just. um. I'm a, I'm a lot happier 
in, yeah. in life now. You know, um, even though I haven't, like, I'm not a big movie star, but I feel like I still have the ability to do things and still create a lane for myself as well moving forward. Yeah. And how, I mean, you say you're, you're not a big star, but how does it feel knowing that we're, you know, 30 plus years later, people still every day are watching it. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel great. And that's why I love going to these cons and, and talking to folks, man. Um, it, it, it feels a little hole inside my soul yeah. that not doing the work has created. And um, like I said, until the resurgence and actually having the opportunity to come out to conventions and meet people, I never knew that it had that effect on, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to hear people come up to the table and, and, you know, tell me how they enjoyed, you know, my, not necessarily my version of Mike Hanlon, but, you know, me playing Mike and, and that stuff. I mean, it, you know, it's, it, it means a big deal to me, you know, and I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. And I mean, and if you think about it too, I mean, like you said, you never really know the impact that that has on people and you don't know like what it meant to other people. And I've, I've always heard, you know, like you plant the seeds, but you never really see the tree grow. You don't really know the impact it has. And you mentioned at the time you were the only black actor on there. You have mm -hmm. no idea who watched that. And um, cause that's been a big Disney starting to tackle that now with a lot of diversity with their characters, but at the time, I mean, you never know who watched that and was like, oh, I see myself All on right. TV right now with this role that he's playing. And um, it's crazy to think about, like, how many people out there you probably impact and you still don't even know. Right, right. And, and you know, and I, I, I'm i very open. Like, I pray and hope I get to hear and get to talk to folks, you know, Um uh, you know, like I said, at conventions, man, like I love talking to folks sometimes, get a little carried away with folks. And <laughs> that was <laughs> good. My like... family loved it. <laughs> well, because, you know, I, I, dude, like I said, I'm, I'm I still consider myself like a regular guy, man. I'm working nine to five, you know, go to work every day. I'm not sitting in a dressing room, you know, I don't. And so it's not worth trying to pretend like. I'm a superstar um, when that's that, that that's not me, you, you know, I'm, I'm, it, yeah. it'd be cool, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm your average Joe, man. And I just want to be a creative spirit and, you know, however that comes out. I, I was going to ask you, like, for you, how fulfilling is that when you go to those comic cons and people come up and they're just like so anxious to to sit there and talk to you? it's a surprise every single time wow um it's a surprise every single time um and like i said i, I love it man like cause otherwise i'd be sitting at work in front of a computer with p and a lot and i don't like i don't really tell people at work and stuff like that like I, that and, oh you know i'm, I'm marlon taylor i was oh, Stephen king's they're it. missing like, out for halloween yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some people know at work and then some people will go tell other people and it, and it might get around that way but it's not something i really go and like you know put out there like that because once again like you know it's I, I like i like the folks that i don't like putting it out there like that but i like hearing from the folks that know yeah you, you know the ones that actually have real heartfelt feelings and like have real things to say about it versus just meeting somebody and being like oh oh you were in that and uh, or you're telling me you were in that and so yeah yeah you're cool now no no let's be cool first and then down the line because i've had people tell me they've known me for a while and they'll be like how come you never told me you were in that i was <laughs> like well it just never came up like, yeah. i don't know <laughs> what, what you got to do is you got to be sitting there and at like you're on your phone and just hang up and be like, oh, it's Tim Curry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what, what is, how do you see yourself in the next five years? Like what's that next big thing for you? You mentioned trying to get into voiceover, trying to get back into acting. What's mm -hmm. like that five-year plan for you? So right now the five-year plan is I got a, um, I got a 13 year old. So, really trying to figure out um, where he wants to go to high school, get him all situated and set up. 
Um, and then my youngest son, like both my kids are super creative. My older one draws, um, like he can draw just from looking at stuff. He doesn't necessarily have to trace it. Um, he knits, um, he's always like making little, like, uh, like I've got a couple of his items at, at, um, at work, but he, he like knits Totoro's and like little animals and stuff that yeah. he, he puts the little, he literally puts the eyes on there. Like he's got this little pig. It has like the little line that actually looks like a pig nose and extra little tail. And then the younger one, um, like, I think he's going to be the actor. Okay. Uh, like he, yeah he's um he's pretty much been in his school play for the last two years he's only 10 um he got to play young Simba last year and kind of had like a singing solo and then he plays in his school band and stuff like that so just really trying to help those guys um find their way and move forward mm-hmm. is kind of that next five-year plan um and then still being able to try and get around and meet people and get to cities I haven't been to before as well as finish writing this little short that I've been working on uh, called hmm. Return of the Skunk Ape, which is supposed to be a ski movie. So Okay. W- where can people be expecting that when that's ready? Oh, man, probably more so um, on like, I-, I have to figure out like what type of opportunities I have for getting it out there versus like YouTube and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I'll probably be talking to John Campiano a little bit um, since he's the one that's out here putting out all these documentaries and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he has a great um, a great line on how to uh, you know make that work and how I can get that out there to the folks. I was like, well, if you head down to the L.A. area, you definitely got some people over here to break bread with you um so yeah if, that's if, home for me that's where i grew up so yeah we're we're at edwards air force so we're about a good hour and a half away but we still are starting to get around pasadena has become like our go-to place around here yes if you have seen pasadena back in the day like uh, i don't know if they're still doing it but people used to actually ride horses around down there yeah you know, like up there by jbl up there i guess mm-hmm. a little bit more in altadena and stuff um you know, and, and it still kind of has that old Western feel. They still do rodeos out there and stuff like that, man. Uh, if you guys stuff. haven't been out to Venice, get out to Venice. Mm. You haven't been to Venice Beach yet? No, not yet. Oh, uh, yeah. You guys got to get out there. Go check out Muscle Beach, um, <laughs> which is – how old is your daughter? She's 15. Oh, okay. So she, she'll be cool at Muscle Beach then because, you know, they be running around in like the little Speedos trying oh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Gr- and greased up and Doing stuff. Doing pull-ups and, and yeah. <laughs> All the like beach equipment out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if and there's a gentleman out there who was in the uh, old original Fletch movie. I don't know if he's still around, but he actually rides around on roller skates, plays the guitar. Um, he's got dreads. It's always kind of wrapped up. Um, but he was always like uh, um, like somebody that was always on Venice. And that's the cool thing about Venice beach is a lot of people that are down there yeah. are always down there. Mm. You know, I, I know that we got tent city everywhere and stuff now. So I, I've heard that it was a little bit like that down there. So if it, the winds up being like that and it's not as cool as I said, don't blame me. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We definitely want to get out towards the beaches. We got here end of August. And then by the time um, we get year? settled in, Oh, well, welcome, welcome, fresh meat. Welcome We're to new. the town. From Al- we drove from Alabama to California, so. How long was the trip? Uh, about four or five days. Okay. Dogs, okay. family, two cars. <laughs> but uh, I, t- I tell you what, that little 2012 Chevy Cruze made its way all the way across and did exactly what it needed to do, so. Um, and, and it's still alive, right? And it's still al- I'm. For as of right now, we're recording. It's still alive, and uh, okay. yeah, got some good <laughs> memories getting on the road. Well, when your kids mention you, last question for you: Kids mention you fifty years from now. They're talking to your grandkids and great grandkids, and they're mentioning uh, your name. What do you want people to say about you? Uh, you know, if we're talking about my kids, I just want them to um talk about how much they love me um you know how much i was there for them supporting them and you know the work hard work that i did to you know make a way for them to have things that i didn't have um if we're talking about um other folks and stuff just um 
whatever inspirations that I was able to, you know, um, give them or whatever memories, good memories that I was able to give them um, that may have either helped them in life or, you know, whether it be through friendship or, you know, some good words or just, you know, an experience, you know, um, I'm pretty much a simple guy. That's actually why I really like being up here in Seattle. Um, you know, I really like the mountains and stuff like that. I love the peace and the tranquility. Um, you know, I'm really big on that. Well, I can't thank you enough. I, you're you're one of the few guests that not just myself but my my family thanks you for for doing this. As I mentioned, whenever I I told them that I had this lined up as my Halloween episode, they were like, "Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's super cool." <laughs> so I can't thank you and uh, oh, thank you. No, I yeah this this has been an awesome episode. Um, you're definitely welcome for to be back on here anytime. Uh, you just folks, let me know, man. <laughs> just oh, let me know. Yeah, we'll do. We get that last Ronin roll. We'll, we'll get you on here. Uh, okay. Again, but folks, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you all have a safe, happy Halloween, and we will see you next time on the Shadows Podcast. Have a great one.